Just about a week ago, Jason Rubin was named the president of THQ, and Jason has a long history in the game industry. Uh, now you're right into the insanity of E3. Jason's yeah. the co-founder of a, a studio named Naughty Dog that will be uh, premiering The Last of Us later tonight at the That's Sony right, Press Conference. That's right, which is one, one game I can't talk that much about because I don't know now, right? It used I know. to know everything that was going on in Naughty Dog, but now I get it like a gamer. I you see were way of the warrior, Crash Bandicoot, and Jack. And now you're at THQ, so I think a lot of people THQ. wondered, you know, they knew you as President of Dog, you know, game designer, visionary guy. Why are you now the President of THQ? What, what attracted you to that? Right, well, uh, I, Brian asked me to take a look at the projects, go out and visit the teams. So I went and visited all the teams that are making games for THQ, and I was really impressed with the teams. I'm really impressed with the potential. I'm impressed with the products they're working on, and I think there's a, there's a huge upside in THQ. And I think I can help THQ create the environment that'll get those teams with all their potential to turn that into good games. So that's, that's, it's very simple actually. Huge amount of potential, think we can realize it. And you know, part of that I'm sure is kind of creative, but a lot of it also is the business side, right? I mean, THQ, you know, finding the money to be able to build games, invest and not have to ship games before they're ready. That's part of, the, part of what you have to figure out, I guess, right? Of course, and yeah. you know, there was a methodology at Naughty Dog of picking the right project, never over promising, hitting our deadlines, doing the things we needed to do, but still creating great titles. And that methodology clearly is still working right. at Naughty Dog. Uh, I so think fewer games at THQ, are you gonna get rid of some too? Uh, yeah, okay. well, maybe. I mean, yeah. we've, we've already gotten rid of a few. I'm sure you've been following in the news that THQ right. is a much smaller, more concise, more focused company. Yeah. Uh, I think we're at the right size now. Um, but what we're not going to do is expand as rapidly as we can into any money that does come into the company. We're going right. to focus on the titles we're doing. I'd much rather double down on a title right. than branch into two titles because, as you know, focus is going to end up being, uh, in the long run, a better way of making good games. Right. Well, you showed us Matt and Trey were on stage at Xbox Matt showing South Park. So you're excited Absolutely. about that. we got some uh, Darksiders going on here, which is coming out in August, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... Even though it's a license, South Park is a perfect example of the type of game I'd like to make. Yeah. I don't know that on a dollar per minute basis, THQ is going to race against Call of Duty or race against the biggest titles out there. But the world is changing, and gamers are now going to be open to more different types of experiences. And certainly South Park on a graphic level is not going to compete with a, with a Grand Theft Auto, but on an entertainment level... It can easily compete and is an incredibly uh, good gaming experience for gamers. And I think THQ in the future is going to move to find those experiences, be they licenses like right. incredible license like South Park or something not a license, something original. And uh, again, I think as the world changes and as the industry moves, uh, you're going to see an opportunity, a new opportunity that hasn't really been there for that kind of game. Yeah, well, it's obviously expanding the market. Lots of South Park fans. But you are taking on Call of Duty with uh, another game called Metro Last Light, right? right. We've got some exclusive footage we're going to show right now of that. Right. Uh, that's uh, developed somewhere. Did you visit this team? Have you this, gone to visit uh, these guys I've, I've visited every team <laughs> except these guys. But right. I did meet with uh, one of the They're principals. They're in the Ukraine, yesterday. aren't they? Or They're yeah. in Ukraine. Yeah. I've promised them I'll be there within 90 days, and okay. I will go visit them. They're a bunch of amazing coders uh, yeah. in Kiev. And uh, they're doing an incredible job. They really are doing an incredible job. And I think, you know, I have inherited a lot of products. And I love Metro. I played it a bunch this week. Um, but the question is, what can that team do in the future? And I think right. there's, again, a massive amount of potential in that team. And I think we can guide them to the right type of product in the future to kind of find a niche. Not that Metro won't find its niche. Right. I think it's a fantastic game. But I think there are also opportunities in the future to kind of retarget. And that's, that's what excites me about THQ. So is, you know, what are your kind of your near-term goals? I mean, obviously you're stepping in with a lot of games already in production. So is of it sort course. of making these even better? Or is it focusing on what, what the next generation of games is from THQ? Of course. The THQ is a ship, and the ship can't turn immediately. So tomorrow we're not going to suddenly be bringing out totally different games games. Yeah. My first goal is to go in and look at the titles we have and see how we can make those titles as good as they can be. And again, there are a lot of things that Naughty Dog takes for granted and other developers take for granted that I think you can bring into some of the teams at THQ and really improve the titles. So um, my, my near-term goal is to really focus on the titles we're working on and make them as good as they can be. And I think we've now, uh, THQ has reduced its size to a perfect core of very solid titles that we can work on. And then, again, the future is, what titles should we be making in the future? What titles should we be doing? And if you look at uh, Steam and what's happening on the PC, you yeah. see that the uh, competition for the biggest, baddest game is still there, of course. And those games will continue to do well. But there's a huge 
array of other titles at other kind of size and, and indie and studios, indies. lots of cool stuff. Well, yeah. and it doesn't have to be indie right. or grand. There's there's a middle right. ground, and I think the sweet spot in the near future is that middle ground. Um, not sixty dollars, not ninety nine cents. There's something in the middle. However, the market ends up pricing right. it. However, we end up distributing it. Yes. There is a market for games that are kind of different, right? right. They're not massive blockbusters. Not that we won't put our foot in that water. And they're definitely not indie games. That's right. not where we're going. But some other experience. All right. Well, we look forward to hearing more about it. Uh, one of the good guys in Thank the business, you. Jason Rubin. It's great to have you back Thank you. in games now. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. I think the last time I actually spoke about games was on your show. Yeah, well, on the bonus round. Well, hopefully right. we'll have you back soon. What was soon. That, two are years you, ago? Yeah. Are you, are you going to design a game or are you not out of the designing business now? I am going to help design games. Help I am design. going to help the teams. Again, the quality of the teams at THQ now is such that I don't need to be designing games.